welcome to A Pop for the Saints on Tuesday, the 17th of October, 2023. Uh, episode number 14 for the season. Marvellous. And we're looking back on the game played on the 14th as well, October last Saturday. It all fits in so well. Right, uh, waffling aimlessly here is David Tavner and about to waffle aimlessly somewhere in St Albans is Jake Ellicott. Hello, Dave. Hello, Lee. Hello, everyone. What, what an introduction. Seamless. Oh, mate. Brilliant. Smooth. Smooth. <laughs> Uh, and add in a bit of quality, no waffle, plenty of Guinness. Um, Lee Wood, no waffles, plenty of hot air, mate. Let's do this, boys. Come on, <laughs> right? We're looking back on last Saturday's game at Cherrywood Road, uh, Farnborough Town. No, it's not Farnborough Town anymore, is it? It went in 2007. Younger listeners won't have a clue we're on about Farnborough 2, St. Albans City 1. Uh, what a cracking start to the game! Uh, we had a clutch of early goals in the uh, two <laughs> games leading up to this. And after just 19 seconds, what, Ryan Blackman, lovely ball out to the left to Dylan Farge. First time cross. They didn't deal with it. In comes the Gio Rasulu. Bang, 1-0, 19 seconds. Brilliant. And uh, nothing went wrong after that, did it? Oh, no, hang on. Um, Farge hit the crossbar. Had a fantastic save by the keeper from uh, Gio Rasulu, free keeper. Push it onto the crossbar as well. That's a great save. Um, and we had other chances, but they were queuing up down the other end, and uh, particularly uh, Michael, uh, what's his blooming name, uh, Filovi. God knows how many chances he missed, and um, they could have won by a country mile in the end, but could have been about five all at half time. Fairly enjoyable first half, second half, not quite so from our point of view. Jake, what did you think? You were down there. Yeah, I mean, I thought we had quite a few chances first half, like you say. I think we it could have been easily three three all at half time, couldn't it? There's a real opening for both sides. Um, talk about those two off the bar. I mean, the Dylan one, if that had gone in, that would have been absolutely superb effort. Um, but yeah, we had a few others. Keeper made a couple of good saves. I'm getting quite bored of this scoring early and then sort of just falling apart. Um, it's not it's not great. Um, it's it's not not that enjoyable actually. Um, and yeah, I mean, I thought. You know, their two goals. I mean, the winning goal is just, you know, unlucky on belief, isn't it? But I think the real concern out of Saturday comes <clears> from, and we've said this a few times this season, is the second half performance and our inability to get back into games after going behind. It seems to be a real issue for us at the minute. Um, and yeah, that second half is that real concern for me. If we'd finished the game strongly, it could have gone away from it thinking not too bad, you know, a bit unlucky. But when you play like that second half after going behind, yeah, it was a real struggle. To, to me, Jake, it reminded me of the game at Billericay. Uh, second half, we did absolutely nothing at Billericay. We were staring into the headlights, didn't know what to do with the ball. At least last Saturday, we did have a couple of chances second half. And uh, we made uh, the keeper make a couple of decent saves, actually. But uh, overall, um, no, the second half, we, we completely went off again. But the funny thing is, the number of goals... We scored this season, nine the first half, ten the second half. It's mirrored by the goals conceded, nine first half, ten second half. So um, even if we're going off in the second half, it's not being reflected in the uh, match scores. Uh, I'll get rid of that stat now. I think most people are asleep. Um, but uh, we, we, you mentioned uh, Ryan Blackman's own goal. We, we can't let it pass without mentioning it properly. If you haven't seen it yet on the highlights, just go to that. It is fantastic. He had his, he was facing goal, always behind him, somehow back dealed it over his head, over Michael Johnson's head, the best own goal you will ever see. As annoyed as he would have been at the time, Ryan, you can live off that the rest of your life. It, it was a classic own goal. God, absolute. I mean, it was skills, wasn't it? I mean, he couldn't do that again, even if he tried. And he's as good a player as he is. I mean, that was, if Messi did that on some sort of like YouTube clip, that would be getting millions and millions of hits. Just unbelievable techers skills. Right, that first half, Jake, I thought our strength early on, typified by the goal, getting the ball out to the left to Dylan Farge, because he was given, uh, Salim said, he was given a run around the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, maybe half an hour, but we stopped feeding him. The goal, we then conceded two goals and we didn't revert back to giving it to Dylan. He, he might as well have gone home then, because uh, we just didn't feed him. Um, I, 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 what do you, where do you see it having gone wrong on the day? Yeah, I agree. I actually think it wasn't just Dylan's side as well. If I, if I think about that first 15 minutes, even down the right, I thought we had a bit of luck. And it was a bit reminiscent of, you mentioned Billy Ricky. It was reminiscent of a game where we did win, actually. Haven't. That first 20 minutes at Haven't on that on that Wednesday night, 
We were playing down the wide areas. We we're getting in behind constantly, and it's a bit like that. And even you know when we won one one up, even one one, I thought nah, there's so many more goals in this for us. Um, and I just don't know why. I think part of the reason, possibly second half, is because Ryan Blackman went off and he was replaced by Andronikos Giorgio, who let's be honest is not exactly a central midfielder and certainly not up to the quality of Ryan Blackman. Um, and we just really struggled to get it out to the wide areas in the end. I mean. Maybe we should play Farnborough some credit. You know, I think they probably adjusted a little bit and they managed to deal with our wide men a little bit more. But it, we just, I mean, we just ran out of ideas, didn't we? And But then it didn't even feel like we were trying to go for the ideas that had worked. We just stopped and we'll just get, no, can't do anything about that. And it was, that second half was really infuriating. I think what we had one shot on target second half um, and it was just the most infuriating watch for everyone behind the goal. Yeah, uh, Ryan got injured before half time. Just say so he went off at half time, replaced by Andronicus Giorgio. I thought he struggled big time to get into the game. I got to disagree with you slightly. I thought our right wing, even early on, I, thought, I just saw nothing down there at all. And I thought nobody should have made the change earlier. But you see, look at the bench. What was there to come on down that right hand side? It wasn't an awful lot to boost us with it. You could stick George Morella out there, but is that his natural position? Um, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, and Ben White would. Presumably he wasn't fit, otherwise he might have come on and uh, boosted, us, boosted us down the left and then we could push Dylan over to the right-hand side, try him over there. But, um, I don't know, yeah, yeah, we, we did just totally run out of steam. Losing Blackman, that's, uh, of course, no news from the club about his injury and whatnot. He's joined the other seven, I put Ben White on there as well, on the injury list. We've got eight players out of injury. We don't know the state of them, how close they are to coming back because we don't get updates from the club for some reason. So when you get very sad, you don't know who's fit and who's not fit. But uh, it's becoming a serious problem now, isn't it? I mean, that squad, it's, 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 nobody said bare bones last week. I think it's gone beyond that. Yeah, absolutely. It's. I don't think it's any coincidence that our slide in form goes with the players that we have lost in recent weeks. And it is a major issue. We touched upon this last week. There's not many teams at this level that would be able to deal with an injury crisis of six, seven, let alone eight now. Um, hopefully Ryan's OK because we're just struggling for bodies in every respect um you mentioned the wide areas again i suppose the only thing i would say was could you have brought you know or potentially started with uh s jeffers i don't know if you've heard about him um and then stuck mitchell weiss outside maybe on the right hand side because we've seen mitch run in a few times and cause trouble from wide areas this season but otherwise i mean i don't envy nobby he's not got many options on in the squad is he to sort of change things with at the minute um, and it is a real struggle for him. Yeah, it's, it's a year for your Nobby now uh, in the role. His first game was the 8th of, um, first league game was the 8th of October last year. We had a Hearts, Hearts County Cup before that, didn't we? Um, we can have a look back at his year, year as well. Um, Full Miles to Farnborough, they went into that game one win in eight games. Um, and yet they were happy to attack, weren't they? And uh, they weren't going to play cautiously and try and get a sneaker win to get back to winning ways. They, they went for it. So full marks went for that. But also, don't you think we're playing more attackingly now as well? Uh, since uh, we went to three at the back because of the injuries forced upon us that uh, well, we received at Chelmsford, we, we, we're creating a lot more chances now. And we are more entertaining to watch. Uh, the wins column looking a bit thin the last few games, but it's better to watch. <laughs> Dave, you're happy. That's the main thing. <laughs> is he, though? Is he really? Well, no. Is he, <laughs> has he ever been? <laughs> um, I think that's a, that is a fair point. I think we do look more open. Um, but to be honest, on Farnborough's point, you know, I think they've seen from recent results against us, teams, the way they beat us at the minute is just attack because of the defensive frailties. I think those issues, uh, they're easy for teams to exploit at the minute. We do look more open going forward, attacking-wise. Defensively, maybe that is hampering us a little bit, potentially. Um, but it is just, I mean, but we do look we, are, we do look good going forward, but then we're not scoring tons of goals, are we, though? I mean, that's, that's an issue. We'll come on to that in a second. Uh, we had a new face in the back three, whatever it was. Uh, a young lad, uh, Joe Partington, 33. Um, we got him during the week from Farnborough and his, his first pass I looked like he was still with Farnborough, he went straight to one of theirs. But after that, I thought he had a decent debut, didn't you, Joe? Oh dear. Um 
<laughs> yeah, he was all right. I mean, it's very hard for him to drop in, isn't it, to this team and expect him to have an immediate impact. Uh, you know, it's the defensive issues aren't going to be solved by one man coming in, I don't think, at the minute. There's so many defensive issues in terms of the players we've lost. Um, it's very difficult. And I, I, don't, I don't think he could have done much. I don't, Lee, I don't know what you think about sort of maybe Josh, if he'd come in and done anything, but also should we have brought in maybe a couple of more bodies last week, even on loan? You spoke about your concerns there, Jake. My concerns for us is basically trying to hold on to a lead. I think that is that is a real concern, you know, considering that our key players are in the midfield and up front. You know, we should be able to take the pressure off of the back line. There's only so much that you can gauge by watching the highlights and following it on the commentary as well. But I thought I thought Carlisle didn't have his best game for us. He was caught out of position and ball watching on occasion. He was, you know, beaten to the ball with quite ease. He's not particularly the fastest, which would implement the fact that you should that your positional play should be better than what it is. Um, but again, I'm just going by what I've seen on the highlights and what the commentary was as well. But the thing is, Nobby's he's on a high into nothing because the thing is he's only got a limited number of defenders to work with. And when your actual defenders are having shoppers, it's got no hope when you've got people sort of trying to slot in either for your first game for the Saints or maybe playing out of position just to do a job. It doesn't help matters at all. I I can't see a situation continuing where we just, you know, it's a status quo. We've got to get some new faces in. Partington may be the first of many. Who knows? But as you say, Dave, we don't know the situation. And I know that clubs these days want to sort of keep their clubs relatively close to their chest, mate. But, you know, there's there's a situation here. You could be coy as a manager or you could be proactive. And that means getting some new faces in. But that's easier said than done, mate, because you've got to get the right faces and you've got to get the right fit as well. I think you know my take on it, Lee. The supporters pay the players' wages. And yet the supporters are kept in the dark about what's going on. How can that possibly be right? It isn't. Um, that, but also, the other point about defenders, they are getting knocked, obviously, because uh, we let, let a few chances for the opposition at the moment. But uh, we're conceding possession quite often too easily in midfield. Um, I defend Ben Smith to a degree on that. I don't like the way he's so defensive and he should come forward more. And I think he's actually started doing it the last couple of games. He's doing more forward passes than he used to. He does keep possession a lot. Um, but we we do concede it too easily, too sloppy. And it, and it puts pressure on a on a defence that's um, it, it needs changing again. It needs reorganising one way or another. Um, but they had a penalty. Uh, the previously mentioned Michael, what's his face, took it. And um, Michael Johnson, in his 100th game as, as an Auburn City player, marked it by saving a penalty. Now, that, that's 12 that uh, John has faced. Uh, only seven, uh, five have resulted in goals. And he saved, was it, one... One, two, three, four, five of the last six, I think he's faced, he's saved. It's, it's a phenomenal record he's got. And, uh, well, we'll be, be without him. And he made several other good saves on Saturday, on Saturday as well. So, uh, he's having a good season. But, um, he's probably working a bit harder than he'd like to. And also, second half on Saturday with Captain when Blackman went off, which is the first time he's done that. Right, that's uh, one end of the pitch. The other one, Jake, you mentioned Sean Jeffers. What's your problem there? <laughs> What's my problem? <laughs> Boy, he's throwing you <laughs> under the bus there, mate, isn't he? I, Goodness I don't have a problem me. with Sean Jeffers. I mean, I, I just wish he was out there more. That's my main issue with Sean Jeffers. I think, again, on Saturday and the same with Eastbourne, it just felt all a bit, a little bit too late to be bringing him on and changing things. And, I mean, it's just not working, is it, with him coming on, what, with 20 minutes to go most games? It's, it's a real, real struggle for the supporters as well. A lot of them... You know, no Sean just needs that half a chance. And in a game like Saturday, you never know. One of those chances in that first half falls to him. You know, we could be two, three nil up. You know, it is all luck. It's a matter of inches, but it is just fine margins at the minute. And, you know, a can be Saturday didn't particularly impress me. I don't know what you thought, Dave. Um, and you just wonder what Sean Jeffers has got to do and why he's still stuck on the bench at the minute. Uh, he got a right slate in Canby did from the person next to me when he came on to sub at Chelmsford because um, he missed that sitter. Uh, but he's looked better since then and um, he's had some shots on target the last couple of games. Right, he scored against Hemel's kids. Uh, and 
he's had other shots on target, but the keeper saved. So at least he is getting them on target. I mean, you look at Andronicus Giorgio, he's, all his shots end up in whichever town centre we're playing at. Um, and at least he's doing the hard work. So he's forcing the keeper into saving. He, he's not the worst striker we've had from a long way, and I think there's something to work on there. <laughs> his gold record uh, is not fantastic from what we've seen. But um, I don't know. Maybe we can get the best out of him. Well, <laughs> but it's, it's short. Go on, turn yeah. I was going to say, you just wonder, you saw what he could do against Hemel on Tuesday night last week with Sean Jeffers alongside him. And you just wonder again, is that something that maybe we could look at, look at and then potentially push Mitch out wide? Don't know, there are options there. It just feels like we're now rigidly stuck with a Camby uh-huh. and Weese up front together and there's no no sort of option to sort of mould that and maybe change it a little bit. Right, we're going to come on to a hot Sean Jeffers story in a minute. But um, nobody. He's been manager now for 52 league games. The player who's played in the most... Oh, ben, I'm going to put my glasses on there. Oh, my God. I don't know if tonight's dinner menu. Um, the player who's played in most of those 52 games is uh, Sean Jeffers. But of course, oh. 19, 19 of them, a substitute. Um, 31 starts, 19 sub. But it's, the question I'm going to put to you two before I get really stuck into these uh, stats, because they are fascinating. Um, we don't play him from the start, but so we presumably think he's not good enough to get goals now. Is that the reason for not starting him? Because, but then we decide he's going to get goals if we stick him on late in the game. Where on earth is the logic in that? Me? There is none, <laughs> is there? <laughs> well, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, no, but the thing is, we know the club have tried to sell Sean Jeffers, we know that, and the thing is, it's just a massive kick in the face. and. Someone mentioned this to us, Jake, last week, and I don't know whether there's any validity in it, but the more this goes on, the more it could become a point in that Nobby's making himself look a little bit stupid because the thing is, you're sort of cutting off your nose to spite your face. And there's obviously an issue with Jeffers that, that David Noble doesn't like. When when I had a chat with, with David in, in the summer, it was, oh, he doesn't run enough and, you know, he doesn't bring balance to the, to, to the side. Well... OK, possibly, but it was good enough for your first half of your campaign, you know, when you were becoming manager then. So there's got to be something else there. Um, is it the fact that he's trying to free up free up some money? You know, because Jeffers, you know, is on a good deal. But you, boys, you tell me, because every single person that we've spoken to or has come up to us or messaged us or tweeted us or emailed us, they don't get it. The opposition fans, they don't get it. Sean Jeffers, he doesn't get it. So, you know... It's, it's down to David Noble and he's sort of, he is painting himself into a corner and he's going to be staunch about it, of course. Of course he is. And it can be, he's done nothing majorly wrong, you know, and I think that's obviously, he fits into the formation that David Noble wants. But when every single time that Sean has been on the pitch for any good length of time, he's done something to help the side, whether it be command defenders or he, God forbid, score goals. So, you know, I don't know how long Sean has got left. He's got, you know, the rest of the season to sit it out if, if he wants to and fight for his place. But the thing is, does he need to justify himself at this point? It's funny, the first, what, 10 or 12 games of the season, our football was based on possession and we created so few chances doing that way. So anybody up front would have struggled to get a decent number of goals. Um now we're a bit more open. More chances are coming. You'd love to see him out there. You, you look at the league table. Um, the teams above us have scored... Well, no, no one scored fewer than us in the top... Boom, 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 16. You have to go down to the 17th place of Western to someone who scored fewer than us. But there's a couple of sides who scored the same, but they got games in hand that they might beat that. It's the first time in our history we've, we've gone 15 opening games of a season and not once scored three times in a game. So you've got to look at it and say, well, Nobby, is it working? Is it working? Look at the goal scorers and in Nobby's reign. Um, third highest in league games, in the 52 league games, is Zane Banton on nine. Second, Michel Weiss on 12. And out in front, Sean Jeffers, 28. And he can't get him a starting lineup. Yeah, and we've it's... been told that, that, that his position is based on stats, aren't we? <laughs> but but we are. Go. We're told it's based yeah. on stats. The only stat that matters to me, if you're a striker, is scoring goals. Yeah. So that implies to me there's something else going on there. 
there's something fundamentally rotten about this whole situation because it can't be as simplistic as, oh, he doesn't run enough. That's absolute crap. And, you know, surely everyone else can see the benefit. And you know what? If I'm John Meeks or any of the other management side, I've got to be chatting away in Nobby's ear. So, look, Gaffer, is this, is this working? Is this what, what, what we want us to be? Because um, I'll tell you what, as fans, it certainly isn't. Yeah, right. Let's come on to the uh, the big story for Sean. Um, I had it a few weeks ago. This story is given to me from a very reliable source. I had it from another source a few days ago, um, which has always given good information in the past. I think you two have heard it as well. And it's to do with Sean's contract. If he plays a certain number of games this season, it triggers a triggers a clause where we have to offer him a contract for next season as well, or automatically given to him one way or another. Um, but as you say there, Lee, um, we know the club have tried to move him on. In the summer, two clubs at our level, one no longer at our level, uh, in particular came in for him. From what I've been told, the club wanted too much money. Uh, right or wrong, don't know. Um, and you just think, why? Why? If, if you're not bringing in a 25-goal striker to replace him, why are you getting rid of his, our 28-30 goal striker? Um, but even if it, that contract... It's dropping him to the bench, trying to unsettle him, so he won't stay here um, to play that number of games. Um, or is it only based on starting appearances? So if we keep playing the sub, it doesn't trigger that clause. I don't know. It, none of it makes sense. But you two have sorted out. Where are we? Go on, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a very simple football supporter, and in my mind, just none of it makes sense. True story. Um, yeah, very true. It's it's infuriating at times, and I think especially on those games like Farnborough, you know, it's not the, not the greatest trip to make on a Saturday. You're going a long way, you're spending quite a bit of money to go support the Saints, and then to see this man who you know can get you know 25, 30 goals a season sat on the bench until what midway through the second half for no real obvious reason based upon our style of play in the current moment of time, it is just really really annoying to be honest as a Saints fan. I know it's annoying for a lot of Saints fans, I think. The real worry for me is it feels like the supporters are certainly losing a little bit of faith and confidence in Nobby at the minute because of the Sean Jeffers situation. And of course, it's combined with results. You know, results up until, you know, Billy Ricky weren't too bad. But then having said that, Chelmsford was, you know, we only won that because of a certain Sean Jeffers with two goals. Otherwise, I don't think we're scoring that day. Um, and of course, the results since then haven't been good. So the pressure is going to build naturally. But at least if you've got Sean Jeffers out there playing a bit more and giving him a run in the side, you know, he's a run in the side of what, two games? Scored two at Chelmsford, didn't have a great game at Billericay. But then show me a player that did apart from Michael Johnson. Why do you not hit, stick with Sean Jeffers still and give him a run of games? You know, it is just absolutely ridiculous at the minute and I think most fans are getting really tired of the situation you know we don't speak for all fans I'm sure there's some supporters who think that we do play better without Sean absolutely fair enough and I think Mitchell has actually stepped up up this season and scored a decent amount of goals so far this campaign um but aside from that and interestingly Dave you talk about your list there I mean the third top scorer Zane Banton you know he's out the side with a you know a serious injury so that's even more goals missing and so if you're deliberately hampering yourself by then not playing Sean Jeffers, you're missing a whole lot of goals from, you know, this team, aren't you? Putting uh, Sean Jeffers' issue almost on one side, Lee, how would you view David Noble's first year? Is he still in credit? I think he has to be, of course. I think given the almost immediate turnaround of fortunes and performances when he came in, and he got us playing attractive football. And the players he brought in to the latter end of last season, just amazing. They fit straight away. I think he's in credit. Of course he is. And he's our manager. And we love him. And, we, you know, we love him as a player and we love him as a manager. But I think there's, there's an appreciation that it was never going to be, you know, without issues. Um, he is learning the game as well. You know, he's very staunch. He knows he is a pupil of the beautiful game. But that said, I don't think this is a this is a footballing issue with Sean. Because 
the thing is, it can't be down to finance because we've got more people coming through with turnstiles now. We've got, we keep seeing sponsorship deals coming out of our ears, you know, with, you know, with, the, with these companies. So, it, and I want to pass this back. Do you remember there was a player that we signed, um, Gary Rate, under Lee Hardy? He was on a thousand pounds a week, right? And at the time, Lee Hardy said, well, look, it's a lot of money. It's a hell of a lot of money, but that's the going rate for a basically a conference national player playing at this level. And to be fair, it's worth every single penny because he's going to do a really good job. If Sean Jeffers isn't doing the job, if he's not scoring goals or he's, he's not taking defenders away or he's not bringing other players into the game, you know, then obviously that's an issue that David O'Rourke can come back with. But every time he's given a God's honest chance, he's scored goals. Um, I think David Noble, you know, I'm pleased he's our manager, but I think I'd rather him. I was pleased last year when he was playing Sean and we were getting good results and we were beating good teams and we weren't conceding so many goals and we weren't leaking so many um, goals. You know, the, the thing is, it's not football is a, such a fickle business, Dave, isn't it? It is, yeah. Get a but Jake Ray, and I, if that, yeah. Go on. If that figure's correct, um, yeah. He was a good player, good, good midfielder. 15 mm. goals, 138 games. But that puts him on a lot more money than Steve Clark was on, than Lee Clark was on. Yeah. Um, I, I find that staggering. Mate, I'm uh, telling you now, that, 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 is, that is what it was on. That is what it was on. And But the thing is, it's we didn't have too many... But everyone else in that, in that side at the time was nowhere near what the other players are on now. So I think it balances out. You know, we have probably had one or two players back then who were on good, good money, um, and the others not so much. Well, I think now there's there's sort of parity in and around the squad, isn't there? But look, we just need. I think there needs to be some sort of clarification because the post matches are just at the minute they're getting quite tedious. There's no questions. We're not learning anything from it, and you know they're just drab and, and monotonous. And the idea of having a post match is that you learn the manager's thought process behind who he's picked, why he's, why they've played a certain way, what he, what he felt about the game and maybe the game to come. But I don't think we're learning anything that we don't already know because it's the questions aren't being asked. The questions aren't being put to David. Um, in terms of credit, he's got some. How long for? Because as Jake said, I'm, I'm pretty much in the camp where I'm pleased that he's our manager. But there are certainly a few people and a few voices around us that they're wavering. You go along with uh, Lee's agreeing that he's still in credit then, Jake? Yeah, I think he is for now. I think he did a brilliant job when he came in last season, did a brilliant job last season. Totally never expected to get to a playoff final. It was absolutely brilliant. He gave us some great days out um, and some memories we'll hold for on for a very long time. It was superb. It's interesting to contrast this point. As you said, it's pretty much a year on. You know, when Nobby came in, Sean Jeffers wasn't exactly in sparkling form, was he, under Ian Anderson in the last few weeks of his reign? I mean, he scored at Chesant, didn't he? But apart from that, he really struggled. He actually, Sean Jeffers actually, compared to this season, actually looked like he was playing with his head down. And now you compare it to a year later, how much has changed? Now Sean Jeffers sat on the bench, not really getting much game time. And David Noble seems to have, wants to, you know, not play him at all. So it's really interesting how much can change in that year. And the reason for it, you know, we'll probably never know. But I think Lee's points about the post-match affair as well. It's not like we're in the Football League. You know, these managers don't have a weekly press conference with members of the press, you know, local press, even national press sometimes. Don't have that. All we get is David Noble once a week in the post-match. And it'd just be good to hear a bit more and get a bit more of an explanation of his thoughts. I'm sure it all makes sense tactically to him. Um, but, you know, for us fans, it's it's a difficult one to still work out. But, you know, I'm still behind David Noble. I think he's a brilliant manager. I think he's done a great job for us. It's just for me, just this one tiny issue. This annoys me more than our defence leaking goals, because I can understand the defence leaking goals or players taking time to get used to the style of play under Nobby since they're signed in the summer. For me, it's Sean Jeffers. And if he's on the bench then he is just a wasted asset that should be out there playing. Yeah, one of you mentioned earlier about, is it time to start bringing in the loan players or whatever? But, but can we afford it if we've got these seven players injured? We, we're still paying them if they're not playing. Um, is there room in that squad without <laughs> moving Sean on? <laughs> um, 
don't know. Is it, or is a club where they say, come on, we're getting these magnificent gates. We can afford some a couple of short-term loans. Well, we've brought in a can B in Partington in the last what, month, haven't we? So and both of those are permanent deals. Well, permanent deals, you know, I suspect not on contracts for this season, but, you know, decent deals. And they're not going to be the cheapest of players, are they? So it is interesting, you know, if you can bring those in, surely there is a little bit of space for getting in another couple of loans, potentially. I do believe, I do believe in David, because I think that there's, there's previous experience there that, that he can sort of, he's got an eye for a good player. I just wish he would be a bit more, you know, just be a bit more clear about his vision and what he wants and how hard he's working. In the, I'm not saying we've got names, you know, because his post matches, right? I'm, listen, we don't want him to be a Mark White at Dorking where it's expletive ridden. Um, I mean, listen, if, if you haven't seen it yet, just go on to go on to the socials because he's had an absolute meltdown this week. It's a beautiful thing to watch. But I, I do think there is validity in asking these questions because as fans, and Dave, you alluded to it right from the very off, mate. You know, supporters pay pay the wages of these players. So we're entitled to have some sort of information about how our football club is going to get out of this situation, right? That's how it should work. But that's not always the way. And I appreciate that he wants to sort of keep things close to his chest and he hasn't got to answer to anybody. You know, he's the manager of our football football club. He picks and chooses what, what sort of news he gets to sort of tell us. But, you know, when he, when he wants us to sing and get behind the team, you know, we need to know. We need to know that he's just as invested in, in, in the longevity and getting some good players in because at the minute he's struggling. He is struggling. And I think we need something to sort of be turned around either in performances or maybe some new faces. You can see how much he is uncomfortable with the interviews. And and I think maybe the interviewer should give him a helping hand um, with some decent questions, lead him in to talk about areas like the injuries um, and the way we're playing. You know, what about the opposition? Um, what do we plan to stop them? Or et cetera, that sort of stuff. Just help him, lead him down that because um, he, he's been slow to learn as to how to deal with the press on that side of it. Maybe it'll come eventually, but um, it, the interviews aren't doing him any favours, unfortunately. Um, right, Farnborough, that win has put them above us in the table. Uh, we're away to Chippenham Town on Saturday. They're level on points with us. Uh, we've been to Hard and Hewish Park, what, seven times? Haven't won there yet. Um, so, obviously, the law of averages is on our side. Yes, absolutely. Oh, it's easy, <laughs> easy. It's going to be another difficult one, isn't it? Um, because of that is the injuries and the squad issues. We don't know who's available. We don't know who's going to be there. We've got real, real concerns there again. And, you know, Chippenham, they've not had a great start like us. You know, both teams fairly similar so far, but they've got players that can hurt us. They've got Fass and Maid. They've got Freddie Grant. Both of them have played sort of National League level before. It will be difficult. Chippenham has never been a great hunting ground, as you say. It's not great memories there at all. I mean, what, last season we had a mistake in red cards. Um, Zane Banton broke his leg there a few years ago. And the James Ewington having a shocker up front there a few years ago as well. It's never been a happy hunting ground. It's going to be difficult. We know that Chippenham will be in our faces from the off. It will probably be quite a physical challenge again. Um, and, in, you know, at this stage, it's sort of, it's almost, do you want it enough? Can you go out there and fight for the win on Saturday? Because it's going to be really difficult. And I, I Unless we bring in some players this week, it's difficult to know what, and we said this last week, didn't we? What can Nobby change in the team apart from the obvious of Sean Jeffers? Uh, one win in seven for Chippenham. The last four home games, uh, a three or draw, two nil defeat. And the last two, they've lost 4-1. So uh, history will be made when they lose three in a row, 4-1 at home, obviously. Um, Joe, Joe, didn't you have trouble Chippenham last season? As I recall, it was a wet day. Yes, yes, we had. To, yes, we had all that way to see some the wrong person get sent off, and for our trains to be pretty much stranded, and then have to get a taxi back to Swindon and get home about I don't know ten o'clock at night. Um, it wasn't really worth it. Uh, so hopefully it's a bit better for the Saints fans traveling. Really? So, although the for, the forecast, it has to be said, is quite wet again for the coming days. So I suspect I suspect the pitch will probably not be the most conducive to football either, uh, even at this stage of the season. 
<laughs> no, here we go. And we've got another one next Tuesday as well, Slough Town. Um, oh, God. Oh, more football. I keep forgetting about these games. <laughs> well, Johnny Goddard, he's got three for them. Um, top scorer is George Alexander with seven in ten. And now they are on a good run. Eight games unbeaten, but four of them are in the FA Cup. And because of poor league form, a few draws in there, they're still in the bottom four. Um, uh, we, we do need a home win, don't we? Uh, to, to end this run and uh, get the crowd back on our side. It's still a fantastic crowd, our last home game. 1,700, or not, not the Hemel game. It was, that was 800 odd for the Hearts Charity Cup, which is fantastic in itself. Mm. But we, we do need to give the fans some, something good at home, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's not been the happiest hunting ground, has it, at Clarence Park? And I think, to be fair, the crowd has stuck with us so far this season. 1,700 the other week was absolutely amazing. Um, and it was, you know, an interesting game, even if the Saints didn't win. But you're looking at these two games and you're looking at them, aren't you? And you're thinking, really, you want, what, maybe four points minimum? Probably six points if you're properly looking to do something this season. Because, you know, if you struggle in these two games you're quickly getting dragged towards that bottom half, aren't you? You're, no, you know, don't you say, say that. What Slough... are you doing? <laughs> Bloody <laughs> hell, man. So, I mean, Slough are only five points behind us. You know, it's no, no, no. Jesus. It's just it's just more about the mindset, isn't it? About where we want the season to go. And I think if you can now sort of start to kick on and get a couple of decent results, then the last few weeks and this podcast of us moaning, it's all a distant memory, isn't it? It's, you know, get two decent wins and it all looks a lot better. Good point. Good point. Yeah, it's um, beating these sides below us. You're dead right, Jake. You look at our record. We've played six games against teams above us and we've lost five of them. Our points have come further down the table. So um, we've got to make sure those sides stay below us uh, by beating them. <laughs> Simple as that. Absolutely. And, you know, like Lee said, it's so early in the season. The table is ridiculously tight, isn't it? I mean, what? We're three points off the top seven in the playoffs. And five points off the bottom four. You know, it is so early, you can't really tell much. But you, do, you just don't want to keep this slump going, do you? Because it's going to be difficult. And, you know, it's going to be a real challenge for Nobby. We talked about the start of the season, didn't we? He didn't have a great start and the challenges he's had. He's got one now again. And he's going to have to work some magic out of his hat because it is going to be really difficult. And you just wonder again, will he look to bring in maybe a, a face or two this week to try and help? Because, you know, with two games in, what, three days... If you pick up another injury on Saturday, you've pretty much got no one left. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you think the side of being Saturday? Should he make changes? It's pointless speculating, isn't it? Because we don't know the state of the injuries. I'll start himself, like mate. If I were you, I mean, just get his boots on. Crying out loud, he's got to do at least the job, surely. Um, <laughs> but you're absolutely right, fellas. You know, but so Dave, you spoke there about Slough and they're not playing as many games, but that's because they've 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 gained momentum in the cup, so. You know, they're going to be confident. Um, but Jake, I think six points out of these two games, mate, you're an absolute dreamer. If that comes off, buddy, I'm buying you beers. <laughs> I'm buying you beers. Um, and I'm buying Tabs a new pair of specs because those ones were horrendous, mate. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, right. Look at the size of them. Bloody milk bottles. Anyway, listen, prediction time. Come on. Come on. Come uh, on. Let's do this. Oh, you're throwing me completely off here, Leo. Something uh, else I'm going to throw Dave. in. Dave. Yeah. Well, I do want to... Oh, go on then, Jay. I've got, I've got to tell you, I'm going to chuck in. Go on. I mean, I was just going to say, how's the prediction going? Because I think I oh, might be leading. Um, uh, <laughs> I've lost it. It's, it's, the computer's blown up. Um, oh, David Noble, his points per game is 1.6. Now, here's some good news for him. It's better than Ron Dukes. Uh, Gary Roberts and Steve Cook is better than theirs. Graham Goals, James Gray. The combat duo together is better than Connie Lippia, David Howe, Ian Allenson, Jimmy Neighbour. You can go down quite a few good names there. At the moment, he's still got a better points per game at 1.6 um, than uh, some of those great names of the past. Are we are we saying we're just overreacting, basically? And uh, it's all oh, going to be fine. as usual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't know anything. <laughs> Yes, Jake, uh, predictions. You've got two right this season. Lee and I were just timing our run for the marathon, mm. not for the sprint, because you're going to conk out in a minute, obviously. I mean, this this is the first time I've led this, I think, in the history of this podcast. So I'm just going to enjoy the moment. It's it's special. Mm. Yeah, we're not Savor it, son. Savour it, son. Savour it. I've got a pair of these on again, Lee. 
Go on, then. Chipping them. Mm. Uh, I'm going to go... Oh, God. Um, one nil Saints. Love that. Uh, I agree. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go one all. I can't see us winning there because we never, ever do. And it's... Well, I've never seen us win there. That's going to be tough. Gonna... It's going to be tough. I was going to go one or I'll go three one defeat then. Um, right, on to Slough. They've got their replay <clears> tonight, <throat> just after we finish recording this, with uh, Ebbsfleet in the FA Cup final qualifying round. Um, obviously, next Tuesday at Clowns Park, they're going to get slaughtered. Go on, Lee. Mm, why not? OK, yes, I'll play your game, David. Uh, I'm going to go for <laughs> cheeky little three one Saints. Joke. Uh, two two. Negative, negative. Um, we're impenetrable at home, as everybody knows. A two 0 win. Oh my god! What? This is a mixed bag. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's it. Right before before we go, Jake's going to give us a quick resume on the Nash, on the uh, support trust AGM from last week, aren't you, Jake? Yes, we had a support trust AGM. The new board of voting in uh, voted in. Uh, Paul Faircuff was at guest speaker as well. We spoke very well. Ooh. I know Dave, you were very jealous. You missed that. Um, but yeah, an enjoyable evening. Um, and the board is what it is, and it should be in the next couple of match programs. Uh, there'll be some pieces on the trust and the new board in there. So, for any swing supporters watching this that don't know much about the trust, either go to social media or get the match program the next couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, anything. But the last few weeks, we've had supporters' trust coaches running to last few games, which has gone fairly well. So, thank you everyone for that. Um, and the trust is just trying to. Reach out to supporters. So we've got the new trust hut in the York Road corner of the ground as well. So why not pop by and say hello to Ian Rogers and ask about the trust and any questions you have, anything you need to speak about, just reach out. This new this new trust board, did you uh, survive the chop? Ah, I did, just about. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lee. Looks Looks like his mum got the casting vote again, Lee. <laughs> well, on that note, I think it's time for us to end. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can go to Twitter, Podfella Saints, email, etc. Thank you all very much for watching. Really appreciate it. And we will speak to you again next week after the Saints have six points. Come on, you Saints. Out.